didn't have the prophet. Joseph didn't have the prophet. But David did and he succeeded. Amen. Amen. Just like you and I, we have our most highly esteem and we will succeed. Amen. Amen. So even death is an enemy to God. And the thing about it is, if Satan is an enemy to God, why would Satan use an enemy against you? Think about it. See, brothers and sisters, there's something that our most esteemed daddy said today. He said that you are the one to deliver yourself. So even as our most esteemed is coming today, the message, you, ought to, you when you receive it, you know what to do with it to deliver yourself. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, Lord, my God, how excellent is your name. It's not a better song. How excellent is your name in all the earth. Oh God, how excellent is your name forever, oh Lord, oh God. Hallelujah, how excellent is your name in all the earth. Hallelujah, how excellent. Forever, oh Lord, my God, oh Lord, Hallelujah, forever in all the earth. How excellent is your name! Sara Kapa Supra Tili Voro Dovo Kosikiti. Talk to the Lord. Kiri ni mozo brata varani akosa patis lanta brada ni boko sakatas. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father in heaven, we thank you. We give you all the glory, the maker of the heavens and the earth, and the seas and everything that in them is. You are eternally worthy to receive all glory, all honor, power, praise, all majesty and dominion. Even as you have eternally created all things, they are for your pleasure. They are and were created. Father, unto you are we gathered, reveal secrets to us. Glorify your name. We thank you for your children that are here. Lord, take every body in the way. May none of your children be plagued. Lord, save souls. Take all the glory. Thank you for the utterance to reveal mysteries. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Champion, shout fire. 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 Shad Muzozo, Shad Mafuta, Amen and Amen. amen. I want to thank the person of the Holy Spirit amen. for the privilege to be here. Say thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I also want to thank our Father, Papa Joshua Gila. Say we love you, Papa. Amen and Amen and Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God forevermore. Praise God forevermore. Praise God forevermore. All right. Our Papa has declared this new month to be the month of unstoppable results. Amen. It is the month of unstoppable results. It is the month of unstoppable results. Well, maybe not for you, but for me. 
Everything our papa says works in my life. I don't know about you. And he has told us this month is the month of unstoppable results. Now, you need to understand that when you are looking at unstoppable results, there are two sides to it. The first one, the first side to consider is blessings, blessings, particularly when a blessing has been pronounced. For instance, if you go to Genesis chapter 12, and you begin to read from verses 1, the Lord said to Abraham, Get thee out of your country, out of your kindred, and out of your father's house to a place that I will show you. Then he said, I will make you great. I will give you a great name. In you, all families of the earth shall be blessed. And it happened. Today, the whole world talks about Father Abraham yes, sir. and claim they are children of Abraham. Mm -hmm. And some Christians say we are seeds of Abraham. As a matter of fact, Abraham's servant, the one in charge of his estate, when he was getting a wife for Isaac, declared, he said, God has blessed my master greatly. See, God has blessed my master greatly. God has, God did not just bless my master, he has blessed him greatly. The word greatly there means exceedingly. That means you cannot measure it. Amen. You cannot see its end. And the servant was overseas saying this. He was in Syria. Abraham was in Canaan while the servant was in Syria. So what the servant was trying to say is that by the time I even get back, my master would have increased again because he keeps increasing. Amen. I receive. It is the Hebrew word gedula. Yeah. To advance arrogantly. Hallelujah. You know, see, we know you are a humble person, but there is a wealth and there's a greatness God can give you. You are still not an arrogant person, but the wealth is arrogant. Amen. Do you understand? Yes. Sir. yes. yes. See, you are quite a shame. You see that? There's a success God gives you. I mean, no matter how humble you look, to even enter a private jet, to own a private jet, is not humility. Amen. It's arrogance. It's arrogance. But it is it's a necessity. It's a necessity. Yes, sir. Yes, you are still a humble person. Yes, sir. I like that kind of world. The private jet is not humble. Yes, sir. It can't be. And you can't go buying the one that will kill you. Amen. Have you ever seen somebody who wants to buy a private jet and buys the one that will kill him? No. Please answer now. No, sir. Never. No, sir. Let's tell you something. I have managed private jets before. Not one. At least I managed two. And I still manage two. Still do. And where the private jets are parked, they call me the owner because the real owner has given me the sole rights to run it as my own. So I, I manage two private jets, even though I'm a preacher. And I'm the only, pers I'm the only black person in the league of those of us who, because we, we go for meetings, in this region, I'm, I seem to be the, I'm the only black person, really, when we go for meetings. 
who come there. I'm not saying black people don't own private jets. A lot of them do. But they are setting what we use our private jets for under FAA regulations. I'm the only black person in their midst. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And sometimes I, I come for meetings with shorts. I just drive out and I wear shorts. But they address me as an owner. Even a white person is forced to smile at me Hallelujah. because I'm an owner. Yes. And one white man said, these Africans are stupidly rich. Yes. I like that. Yes. That's what he said. <laughs> so one of them wanted to see the car I drive. I didn't know that was his intention. He said he wanted to help me carry something. I was carrying something to the car. So he saw the car that I drive. He said, really, you, you guys are rich. But what we're trying to say is that you can be humble. Yes. But when God gives you greatness, yes. 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 the greatness itself is arrogant. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. We yes, call when our papa got the first private jet, and he wanted to, he said, oh, see, I just want to do everything. I just want to turn it over, overhaul everything. Okay. When we did the pricing, the furniture, the interior, up interior the upholstery, because Rolls Royce does the upholstery, $4 million just for interior. He said, okay, we'll see, no problem. How about this other side? Windshield alone, the small, you know, it has four windshields. Yeah. The small one, one is $40,000. He said, let's change everything. Listen. He is still a very humble man of God. If you say, Papa, he will be laughing with you. But what he has is not humble. Do you understand? God said, I will keep advancing you arrogantly. Now, you need to understand. Abraham was not born rich. For the first 75 years of his life, he was the brokest man in his country. In case you don't know, he was living with his father. He was still living with his father from the day he was born to 75 years. Yes, sir. And the day his father died, God had to come. So, brother, let me help you. Because you, know, you need to leave this place. Oh. Yes, you, you, so you think about it. A man living with his biological father from age 0 to 75 years. Until God rescued him. Honestly. And, and, and God even said, <laughs> I like that. God rescued him. And, and God said, I will make you great. Which means he wasn't. Yes. Amen. Yes. Nah. Yes. No, please don't wear the face of an ostrich. Please. Oh. Yes. Oh. Yes. Yes. The way we are looking now. No, the guy was broke and busted. Yes. And God didn't say, obey me and I will take you to heaven. Because some people think that to be great is an avenue where you will miss heaven. No, God, God says, obey me, get out of this country, and I will make you great. And Abraham never went to church one day. Never. And yet did not go to hell fire. That's why we that come to church, we must be better. Yeah, maybe you have said. Maybe you have said. We must be better. At least you are not up to 75. Abraham was. Nothing was working in that guy's life. Even wife. The womb was tired. The womb was tired of the woman. The Bible says Sarah had to receive strength to conceive. The womb she had had no strength, yet very beautiful. She was a dry leaf. But Abraham's obedience yes, to God, God brought fruitfulness Amen. and brought strength. Amen. It gave strength. The reward of Abraham's obe obedience, the greatness. There's a way greatness can arrogantly advance into a barren woman's womb. Yes, sir. Yes. Yes. Amen. And such women give, give birth to greatness. Amen. Children, children that you can't, you can't, you can't stop them. Yes. I mean, 
Elizabeth was told she was going to be con she was going to conceive a son. Yes. Right through her husband, as the angel told her husband. Yes, sir. And she was going to conceive a son, and it would be great. I mean, he, now Abraham had to obey God to be great. John the Baptist had to be born into greatness. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Do you understand? Yes. Abraham's full greatness came into manifestation when he became 100. Yes. So which means 25 years yes. of obedience brought him what? Greatness. Yes. So the birth of John the Baptist compressed a 100 years. Yes. Yes. Do you understand? Yes. Yes, sir. You didn't get it. Yes. Abraham, it took him age 0 to 100. Yes. To attain greatness. John the Baptist was born into it. You know what that means? Arrogant speed. You understand? So every week in the womb of Elizabeth was one year. Every week for nine months. God compressed a hundred years. They are offended. It was unstoppable. And that same thing happened for Jesus too. Yeah. Jesus also was to be born great. Yeah. Yes, no wonder Jesus in John chapter 8 said, Abraham even rejoiced to see my day. Oh. What took Abraham a hundred years to achieve? I was born into it. Even Abraham is rejoicing. He has never seen our kind before. Myself and John the Baptist were peculiar. And so that's the season we have entered. Yeah. You understand? What your biological father had to be laboring for yes, sir. Yes, sir. within this month. Yes, sir. So yours is even faster than that of John the Baptist. Yes, sir. Yours is faster than that of Jesus. Yes, yours is faster than that of Abraham. Yes, sir. Because for them, their greatness took nine, nine months. Yes, nine months. Abraham, his own, took a hundred years. True. Yours within this month. Yes, One yes, month. Blessed yes, be God. But you sound offended. Very oh, yes, I yes, sir. In one month. In one yeah. I came to America eight years ago. I slept in JFK because I didn't know anybody. But in this same America, I managed to private jets. In this same America, preaching. And I did not do aviation, aviation studies. My papa pushed me into it. When he bought his private associates, now I managed them. <laughs> learn everything you need to learn about aviation. That's how it's. Yes. <laughs> so we chatter. And what we're trying to say is that the unstoppable results can come in two folds. Like we said, the first fold is the blessing. The second one the second fold in which unstoppable results can manifest is a cause. It's a cause. For instance, in, in Second Kings, the Bible did say there was a great famine. Let, let's go to Second Kings, please. Second Kings chapter. See, it must come to pass. It must come to pass. When you hear it came to pass, it means it was unstoppable. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. When the word of the Lord goes forth concerning you, yes, and then we finally hear it came to pass. Yes, sir. That means that word was unstoppable. Yes, sir. No year could stop it. Yes, sir. No season. Yes, sir. No government. Yes, sir. No man born of a woman. No demon hashed out of hell. Yes, can hinder it. Yes, it must come to pass. It must come to pass. That expression must begin to manifest in our lives. Yes, sir. For the best now. For the best. For the best. Bad things will not come to pass, but only glorious things. Now, look at verses 23. Let, let's start from verses 23 into verses 24. Look at verse 24.
And it came to pass after this that Ben-Hadad, king of Syria, gathered all his host and went up and besieged Samaria. The Bible says, and there was a great famine in Samaria, and behold, they besieged it until an ass's head was sold for four score pieces of silver, and the fourth part of a dove's dung for five pieces of silver. Now, what he's trying to explain here is that there was a famine in Samaria. As at this time, Israel was divided. Judah was an amalgamation of two tribes, and they had their king. The tri and the, the two tribes that amalgamated were the tribes of Benjamin and Judah. And then Samaria was an amalgamation of ten tribes, which is also called Israel. So sometimes when you hear the children of Israel or the nation of Israel, just know he's not necessarily talking about the whole nation. He could be talking about the ten tribes. They were the ones called Israel or Samaria. Now, there was a famine that struck Samaria. That's what you're reading. So which means Judah was not affected. They used to be all one nation. But when King Saul told the sketch of Samuel the Seer, Samuel said the nation of Israel is divided. In 1 Samuel chapter 15. So here now, Samaria was going through economic hardship. And he's describing the situation for you. That it was so difficult that the, hairs of, that the head of a horse, a horse, was $80. That's what we mean by 80 pieces of silver. It was that expensive. And in Samaria, in the whole of Samaria, only five horses remained. The family was so bad that they were eating horses. That's what we're trying to tell you. They were eating horses. They ate all the donkeys. And now, only five horses remained. And these five horses belong to the king. And the head of a horse was sold for $80. So certainly not everyone could afford it. But they have even eaten everything. So when they discover, okay, there are no more horses. We've eaten everything. Except the five horses that belong to the king, if you read the whole story. So they said, man, look, what do we do? They started buying the dudu, the excreta of a, donk, of a dove to eat because the dove was called a clean bed. So they were eating the dove, the, the, the excrement, right? What do you call excrement? Dudu, right? That's what you call it. Of a dove. And it wasn't even free. They were buying it for $5, five pieces of silver. So if you say you are going through difficult times, you still have Burger King, you still have Four for four. You see, I've won this. But, but, but this one, they were eating even the excreta of a dove. I, I think you should check it out and see how it tastes. Man. <laughs> You don't even know that you've eaten it already. But it was not even free. That's the point. They were buying it for five pieces of silver. So which means in our day, you will call it five dollars. See that? And not just the whole excreta of a dove. They will split it into four parts. Notice. They were rationing it. Some humans have lived here. Yeah. <laughs> now, that's to tell you how bad this farming was. And that later became scarce. So what now happened? And as the king of Israel was passing by upon the world, there cried a woman 
unto him, saying, Help my Lord, O king. And he said, If the Lord does not help you, how shall I help you? Out of my barn house or out of my wine press, he's trying to be sarcastic. He's trying to tell her, Do you think I have food in my house? I'm also hungry too. He said, Except God helps us. Anyway, he said to the woman, What's the matter? What alleyet day? What alleyet day? That means, What's the matter? She said, She answered, This woman, so this woman who is calling unto the king, pointed to another woman, said, This woman said, Give thy son that we may eat him today. And we will eat my son tomorrow. So we did what? We buried my son with no salt, onions, pepper. The other sir, and grilled my son and cooked him and did it. She said they boiled the guy. He's trying to let you know the degree of suffering in Israel. Even the king could not help. Lord have mercy upon me. Lord have mercy upon me. So one, one woman came and said, I have an idea. Bring your son. Let's kill him and eat. Then I'll bring mine tomorrow. We'll kill him and eat. Then <laughs> she said, We boiled our son. Trying to let us know they were not witches. So brother said, well, we're not witches. It's just hunger. Our, our intestines were, were rubbing our backbone. So we, we had to eat. So the woman is acknowledging, we, we buried my son and it. And I said unto her on the next day, give thy son that we may eat him. And she went and hid her son. Now, what do you think the king would have done? Go, bring, go, Madam, go and bring that your son. Please answer now. Please answer me. Yes, yes, Bring your son. Let me, let's kill him and eat. Exactly. You've eaten my son. Yeah. When you're eating his intestine, when you're eating his stomach, yeah. you must eat your Now, you think that was what the king would say. But see what the king said. Verse 30. Can we read? And it came to pass. Stop, stop. Wait. Are, are you suffering? No. So, why are you reading as though you're suffering? Oh, okay, read now. He is blaming Elisha for it. Yeah. He said, Elisha, you are the reason why we are suffering. Elisha did not know two women had a deal to eat their children. When he says the king passed by the world, he's talking about mourning. He began to mourn. Hi. I must kill Elisha today. No, 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 no. no. Ah, no, that, that guy, I must kill him today. I must kill him today. How can we call, have a prophet and we are suffering like this? These people have finished eating all the horses. The only ones that remain are five. Because a king has a lot of horses. He also has ate some. But now he said, well, I need some escort. I need at least like five. Now, they were buying the excrement of of, 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 of a dove's dung yeah. rationed. Yes, Four for five. <laughs> yeah, for sure. It became scarce. All the doves, they probably ran away. They say, brother, if you're eating our excrement, you will catch us. <laughs> so all of them probably ran to Judah. They say, Hey, Israel is a dangerous zone now. They even want all the vultures. They didn't even see vultures. Wouldn't it have been, wouldn't it have been nice to eat all the vultures? Yeah. Even vultures, they're not sure. Vultures say, you won't see me. I'm on top of the hill. <laughs> ah, 
Ah, and the king said, no, 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 no. Sheesh. What kind of thing is this one? And Elijah says, he's a prophet. How can we have a prophet and we are suffering like this? Meanwhile, he is the cause of it. His stubbornness, his headiness was the problem. He refused to go and see the prophet. And because he refused to go, God said, no problem. I will make this economy tight. Ah! The king was so sad, so offended. He said, uh, I must cut off the head of Elisha today. No, 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 no. What kind of rubbish is it? There's no point having a prophet. We're all suffering like this and we say we have a prophet. So, to cut the long story short, the, servant, the king sent his servant. He said, go ahead. Go and capture Elisha. Now, you need to understand, Elisha did not run to another country. He was still in Israel. Do you understand? Yes, sir. But he was not suffering like they were suffering. He was under a different economy. Yes, sir. And the economy came from the word of his mouth. Yes, sir. And all the king's lords, yes, sir. the chiefs, the elders of the tribes, they abandoned the king, went to start living with Elisha. They all look, they say, Man, sister, there's no food here. What's the point of having a big mansion when we can't eat? So they all went, they said, Elisha, please, give us one spare room. All the <laughs> elders, they all started living with Elisha. Elisha said, man, the whole place is full. I don't have space. They say, even if it's veranda, you will sleep as long as we can eat food. Because God was providing for only Elisha. And these women didn't need to kill their children if the king was humble enough to come and see the man of God. Because the whole story, if you read the whole story previously, this was a king who had no regards for prophets. Now, notice we didn't say regards for pastors. Pastor means priest. They were priests, but prophet. These people had no regards for prophets. This king. And his people has been telling, have been telling him, O oh, king, go and see Elisha. He's the real Marco. He's the main guy. Everything is in his palm. He can twist his economy. God. Hush. Hush. That God can put the destiny of everyone in an entire nation in the mouth of in the mouth. The mouth. Yeah. On the tongue. In the seen. mouth. Of one man, Elisha. The key to the success of that nation, the key of abundance to that nation, was on the tongue of one prophet. The king said, Whether the key of abundance is in his tongue or not, that head that has the tongue with the key will cut it off. Oh, yeah, brother. Carry your cutlass. Go. Go and cut off his head. Aye. Elisha was just talking. They were just having a nice time. Some of the elders, they were in Elisha's backyard. They were tanning their body, you know, hot sun. <laughs> Summertime. <laughs> That's why Elisha said, Ah! He began to see in the visions. One guy coming with a shining machete. Mm -hmm. he said, Who is this person coming? Oh? Hey, hey, exactly. Hey. God open my eyes. Hey. See? You are not receiving. She is receiving. Hey. See, don't get used to me. No. Don't make that mistake. You see, you saw me a few days ago. Don't think I'm still the same. Don't get used to me. You understand? That was the problem King so hard with Samuel. Samuel said, you are too used to me. You don't know how to finish you. Okay. Say amen. 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 
So, they were just talking, Elisha and some of the elders, just talking. Yes, sir. In the innocence of his heart, oh, all of a sudden, he began to see visions. Ah, someone is coming to kill him. What did he do? He didn't do anything wrong, oh. So, don't say, I didn't do anybody anything. I don't know why trouble came. Mm. You should have been able to see. The problem is not that trouble came. You should have seen it from afar and destroyed. Yes, 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 yes. Yes, yes. Yes, yes. That guy is coming. You know. Let's read. Let's, 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 uh, let's read from verses 31, please. One to go. So, what are you reading? Read, please. Why don't you go? Then he said, God do so and more also to me. If the head of Elisha, the son of Elisha, shall stand on him this day. But Elisha sat in the house, and the elders sat with him, and the king sent a man from before him. But he read the message of him. That means, but while he was still afar off, yes. Go ahead. <laughs> he called, the man has not killed him yet. He's already calling the king a murderer because he's coming from my head. <laughs> See, that son of a murderer. This was the son of King Ahab. This king was, the, was King Ahab's son. Yes, King Ahab had already died. Micaiah prophesied his death. So now, this is King Ahab's son. He says he had a son of a murderer. Why did he call him son of the murderer? Actually, it was because of what a King Ahab did to Naboth when he took his vineyard. Yes, yes, yes. Then, as at that time, Elisha was still serving Elijah when that happened. So there's a history coming. Yes. Elisha said this, 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 this. So this king was the son of Jezebel yes. for King Ahab. This, this, this. So, the, these prophets are already familiar with their history. These wicked people. This son of a murderer is coming now to take off my head. Okay. Why he was still talking? He said, see how the son of the murderer has sent to take off, take away my head. Look, when the messenger come in, shut the door and hold him fast. Wait, 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 wait. wait. I told you, you say, let him come. We are entering in the name of Jesus, go blind. As I say, wait. With the, other, with the way that, with the urgency with which that servant is coming, anointing will not work. Oh. Wow. All, all you elders, you've been eating my food. Now you must walk. Yeah. When that guy enters the house, if he breaks the door and enters, quickly catch him. Yeah. That's what happened, though. Because the guy would have cut off Elisha and said, Because you would have said, uh, you elder from the tribe of Dan, if you let them kill me, you know you know it all. See your poor belly shining now. You, you know, you know. <laughs> That's how they apprehend. And why he was still talking? He said, wait, wait, wait. By the way, I can hear the feet, the sound of the feet of his master coming. That means the king. The king did not just only send the messenger, the king said, I'm even going. Ah, no, 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 no. Enough is enough. Women killing their children, eating, yet they are no witches. How can we have a prophet in this nation and we are suffering? If his master had not killed the 850 prophets of Baal, I could have gone to consult them more. He wiped all my mother's prophets away. They even killed my mother, killed my father. I your master kid, man. I will finish all of you. Eh? You prophets. Elijah said, hold him more. Hold him more. He said, it is not the feet of his master behind him. And why he yet talked with them, behold, the messenger came down unto them. And he said, behold, this evil is of the Lord. Why should I wait for the Lord any longer? Hmm. He said, God is the one doing this. 
So even evil men can tell what God is behind. Because evil people do voodoo. They have checked the oracles. They have seen no demon is responsible. Demons say, we can't do this thing. We don't have the ability to cause this kind of economic hardship. Who is behind this? I can't mention his name, but you should know. His prophet, his hair is bald. Say, ah, Elisha. So this king came. He said, God is behind this evil. God is the one behind. No, there's no other way. God is the one behind this evil. Now, let's see something. <clears throat> Scroll up, please. Go to, chapter, go to the next chapter. Then Elisha said, Hear the word of the Lord. That's what we're saying. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thus said the Lord. Please, mark that expression, hear the word of the Lord, because, because it will be very, very useful in understanding the, the mechanics of unstoppable results. Here he says, hear the word of the Lord. Thus said the Lord, tomorrow, about this time, by this time tomorrow, a measure of flour, a measure of fine flour will be sold for one dollar, and two measures of barley for one dollar in the gates of Samaria. Now, read the next line. Then a Lord on whose hand the king leaned onto answered the man of God and said, Behold, if the Lord we will make windows in heaven. How can these things be? He's trying to say, even if God opened the windows of heaven, the kind of hardship that we are faced with, this thing cannot be possible by tomorrow. At least it can take a year. At least if you say six months, at least if you say uh, 12 months or 24 months, we can understand. But you say by this time tomorrow, are you that desperate you don't want to die? That's why you are quickly, you are prophesying in a hurry. This was the word the king needed all this while, but he refused to come and see the prophets and the people were suffering. Pride. That's what is happening in this country. That's true, sir. That's true. It doesn't matter what people say the president is of God and all that. There are people you're supposed to talk to yes. who carry the keys of this nation yes, sir. Yes, sir. that I refuse to go and see. Yes, you see this thing, this crisis, I say, this is just the beginning. No? <laughs> you don't understand this. This thing will, wait, see, you'll see what next week is like. Wow. <laughs> we've seen everything already. Wow. You'll see what everything. He himself will be tired. He will be tired. Because in the visions, I didn't see him for a while. It was the vice, my prince, that was not talking. Because the thing, what is coming is like a hammer. They are talking about burning businesses. When you now begin to see federal buildings collapse, mm. <laughs> they will not know that. We are not playing, no. <laughs> yeah, sir. In the future visions, where you begin to see members of Congress meeting under a tent, <laughs> let's not go. Let, let, let me not take it there. Okay, fine. He said, How can these things be? Ah! And Elisha answered, Behold, you will see it with your eyes. You will never, never benefit. You will never partake. You argue with me? Do you know who I am? Do you know who I served for over 40 years? Elijah. When I was serving him, I never prophesied one day until the day he departed. That's where I began to see visions. Those who have been prophesying before me, prostrate before me, you this small boy, because you are holding one... Because the king is using you as a pillow. 
He's leaning on you, climbing you like sleep bed. You challenge me. That's why, again, some of you people who claim you have rich people as friends, you ask yourself again, are you really a friend to a rich person or you are a pillow? Because anytime you are in problem, that's, anytime they are in problem, that's when they come to you. Then they cry. They lean on you. You are a pillow. That's what you are there for. In case you don't know. Because when you are rich like them, they will, they will use you as a pillow now. <laughs> you are rich, I'm rich. Talk. Let's talk. No. Oh, you see me. You are my friend who is always there for me. You are always there for you. Who is there for you? Are you successful? Anyway. Elijah said, your eyes will see it, but you shall not eat it. Now, read the verse 3. And there were four lepers. Now, now, another thing. It's amazing how God works. The man of God now has spoken the word. Yes, now, sir. you need to understand. Elisha himself did not know how the thing was going to happen. Yes, sir. Already, he already felt insulted that someone challenged his prophecy. Meanwhile, what the person was actually trying to communicate to Elisha was common sense. Let, let's just reason. This thing is not possible by tomorrow. But uh, you don't know the hardship that is in town. No? I say women are killing their children to it. You say there will be surplus by tomorrow. Come on, reason it. And maybe this Lord was the chief economic advisor to the president. He carried his uh, scientific calculator. Elijah said, brother, your eyes will see it too. Like you have seen this calculator. You will not eat it. Now, if you ask Elijah, how would this thing happen? Tell you, I don't know. I've spoken. God, audacity. Wow. And it's amazing that the angle, the place where the supply was going to come from, was a place you will never, never, ever think or expect or dream of that supply will come from. Lepers. In case you don't know, let, let's tell you how they treated lepers in this day. In the days of Elisha. Lepers are people who, when they are coming close to you, they will scream and ask you for food. Because leprosy is contagious. Yeah. It, eats up, it eats up the extremities of the body. Mm -hmm. Now, what the Jews did was that if they want to give a leper food, they would put food on the plate and put it outside and put it on the floor and then they would carry stones. Mm -hmm. They would carry stones and tell the leper to come and take his food. And the reason why they took stones is it was a sign of caution. Because leprosy is contagious. So they are telling him, just carry the food and go. Don't try and come close. Because some of them can be crazy. They can come close and hug you. <laughs> so he said, brother, just carry the food. Even when the leper is saying thank you, say carry food and go. But that's true. Even the leper knows, brother, if you come close, this one will bust your eye. <laughs> now, God is going to use these kinds of people. Yes, sir. That even the human society has already sentenced and condemned, ostracized. Elijah didn't even know that no matter how beautiful his prophecy was, it was going to come from the most ugly angle. Yes. Lepers. Yes, sir. So if you are predicting how prophecies will manifest, no. that since it's a beautiful prophecy, it must be an angel. Angels were not involved here. Angels. Yes, 
if you can even eat the doo of a dove, you will eat an angel. That's true. That's true. Yeah. Yes, sir. You didn't get it. Yes, sir. If they can eat the excreta of a dove, yes, then one angel mistakenly is flying over your neighborhood. You will fire him out. Yeah. I mean, if the prince of Persia can apprehend one angel, yeah. and you are hungry, you, you'll be worse than the prince of Persia. Mr. Angel, thank you very much. When we eat you, we are satisfied. We eat divinity. Lepers. Lepers. So, maybe you have not been giving attention to the one God is going to use to help you. Maybe. Because you are thinking this help must come from your best friend. After all, you were there for her three years ago and she promised she would help you. Maybe that's what you think. But you don't know that there's a leper, there's a neighbor that you and your friend laughed at, laugh at, that will be the one to help you. Do you know, a, <laughs> do you know when you go to Manhattan, even down these streets here, you know there are skyscrapers down these streets? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Please answer yes, sir. us. Sir. There are skyscrapers down these yes, streets. Yes, sir. Companies. Yes, sir. Yeah, I'm, not talking, I'm not talking about even federal buildings. Companies. Yes, sir. Down these streets. Yes, sir. Please answer now. Yes, sir. Do you know that they have CEOs? Yes. Someone cleans the CEO's exactly. office. Yes. Someone carries mop yes. or vacuum machine yes. to vacuum. You may say he's a contractor. You may say this. CEO has met his cleaner. Exactly. He has said hello. Where CEO sits, somebody cleans the chair. Yes. You think CEO will not know that person? Yes, they don't know. What if that is the person who can talk to CEO exactly. to hire you? So stop predicting the angle in which this unstop unstoppable, supernatural, glorious results will come from. Yeah. Stop trying to predict it for God. That was the problem Sarah had. She was trying to work the miracle of Abraham being a father of many nations by bringing Agag to Abraham. Wow. Don't try to do it. God doesn't need your help. After all, you've always been there. Have you been able to solve the problem? God says, now nah, I want to do it. Amen. Yes, you say, Lord, Lord, if you must help me, please, don't, don't let it be Brother Boniface. Please, please. I, I don't want Brother Boniface. Oh, somebody like Brother Marcos can. It's, uh, God says, Brother Marcos has been there. He has never been able to help you one day. And but he promised me that he would talk to his uncle when the uncle comes from vacation. Uncle now dies in vacation. One hunter saw uncle bowing down. He thought uncle was a deer and shot him. And <laughs> uncle died. <laughs> because it's hunting season. So he thought it was <laughs> now nah, uncle is dead. No wonder when we visited you, we saw you cry. Now I understand why you were crying. You were crying because the person you thought would help you died. Stop predicting how the help will come. The Bible says and there were four lepers at the entering in of the gate. And they said one to another, why do we sit here until we die? If we say we will enter into the city, there is famine in the city. This will, if we, right now, the condition that those people, those people now, they can eat also. <laughs> I mean, if you can eat the doo-doo of a dough, what can you not eat? Exactly. Right? Yes, sir. Hey, please answer. Uh, yes, sir. If some women can boil their children to, to eat, is it not hot water? Yes, you boil the rep leprosy, will you? Yes. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. You cut the pass and have leprosy out. The, now you may say, Jesus, the chicken you eat, do you know how it was before you ate? Exactly. The chicken that you ate. Exactly. Do you know the kind of cough problem? The, 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 do you know chicken, they like to have cough problem? Cough. They cough a lot when they have cough problem. 
I'm a macante. I've seen chicken with cough problem. Then I've seen chicken with meningitis, where their neck like this. Because you know what we're talking about. Where we used to put pepper and water, with grand pepper. That's a, I ran a poultry before. Chicken with meningitis. The neck will twist. Then we'll grind pepper and pour water. And pour it in, open the chicken's mouth. Pour it in, it must well, oh. The head will turn straight. <laughs> when the chicken sniff pepper, drink pepper, the throat will straighten the neck. <laughs> if the head turn this way, if you drown, if you, if you give him pepper, the head will turn. Is that we, <laughs> <laughs> That's how we used to. If you think I'm lying, see, we are laughing. No. Any chicken that has meningitis, give him pepper and water. Yes. He will be very fine. Yes. With pepper, <laughs> when pepper enters our liver, <laughs> the chicken will, will straight. Then the chicken with, you know, sometimes they have this infirmity where the eye will begin to yes. swell. Yes. <laughs> Who's, we wrote pepper too. It's pepper. <laughs> I mean, it's not inhuman. Go and sit down. Chicken is not human. Chicken is chicken. <laughs> so, animal abuse. There's no animal abuse. Yeah. <laughs> it's not the same as all those people call themselves veterinary doctor. You wear lab coat and yeah. 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 Come being pussycat. If you slap pussycat, you will be. <laughs> Uh, okay. This leper says, man, if we stay here, we'll die. If we go into the city, there is famine in the city. Who? Who can stay like this? Huh? If we even go and ask him for food, the way they will stone us, eh? Because when, when they used to offer us food, they carry stones. Let's, let's go to the Syrian camp. If we survive, it's okay we survive. If they kill us, we don't even have anything to lose. They are even helping us. No food to it. Let us go into the Syrian camp. Yes. Blessed be God. Yes. Now, you need to understand. Up until this time, these lepers were comfortable where they sat. But when Elisha spoke the word, the word entered their minds, begin to reorganize their reasoning. He said, hey, tch, tch, tch. How can we stay here like this? For say I will die. As though they've not been staying there. They've been there. This farming church history reports it was like for close to six to one year, six months to one year. He said, uh, so your words that you speak into the air, you don't know who it will enter. Now, these people did not hear what Elisha said. Now, remember, this was the same Elisha who healed a leper called Neman. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Please answer now. Yes, this was the same guy. Now, you see this Syria that is fighting Israel now? Yeah. Yes, sir. Neman is the one taking them to war. This is chapter 6. Neman came in chapter 5. After Neman, and Neman already told Elisha, he said, you know, I, I love God. I will serve your God, but you know I serve a king yes. who does not believe in God. And he likes to do voodoo. And I'm his army general. Anything he wants me to do, I will have to do it. But please, let your God not be angry with me. Elisha said, it's okay, you are free. So, this, this, this war now, that was lying in wait against the children of Israel by the Syrians, Nehemiah was the one leading it for his king. And Elisha just healed him of leprosy. But God was not angry with Neman because Neman already told Elisha, he said, you know the kind of king. And Elisha was not even worrying about it. Elisha did not worry about it. After all, the king they had in Israel did not even deserve it. 
So now, these four lepers said, if we stay here, we will die. Oh. Let, let, let's go into the Syrian camp. Let, let's go there. If they kill us, no problem. <laughs> if we say we will enter into the city, there is famine in the city, and we shall die. And if we sit here, we will also die. Now, therefore, come, let us fall unto the host of the Syrians. If they save us alive, we shall live. And if they kill us, we shall both die. And they rose up in the midnight. Twilight means midnight. To go to the camp of the Syrians. And when they were come to the uttermost part of the camp of the Syrians, behold, there was no man there. Now, notice, they walked through the camp to the very end of the camp. Now, that's like walking around a, a barrack, a, a cantonment. Mm -hmm. yes, sir. Four lepers. Yes, sir. And they said, there was no man there. For the Lord had made the host of the Syrians to hear a noise of chariots and a noise of horses, even the noise of a great host, and they said one to another, Lo, the king of Israel has hired against us the king of the Hittites and the kings of the Egyptians to come upon us. Wherefore they arose and fled in the twilight and left their tents and their horses and their asses, even the camp as it was, and fled for their lives. Unknown to them, it was only four lepers that were coming. But they thought it was a mighty army. They didn't know. The Bible says they fled. It is they ran. They fled. To flee means to run in fear. Now, let's ask you, between a horse and a man, which one can run faster? Notice, they fled leaving their horses. They say, no, forget to. <laughs> Before I run to my horse, one arrow can hit me at the back of say legs. <laughs> Carry me they go. Pam. <laughs> they run away. I can imagine someone taking his bath in the car. Tomorrow we'll go to work. Let me just take my bath because maybe in the next coming days I may not have time to take my bath. And why you know you I, I never I don't know where well, you all take your bath, but I don't know. Some people may not enjoy the way they take their bath because of the way the bathroom is. You know, when you see someone who, who normally spends five minutes in the bathroom, goes to a hotel, maybe like a heating hotel, and spend 24 minutes, then you know that it was the bathroom that was the issue. And thank God, the person does not have heating bathroom in their house they, because they won't come out. Your children will be using your neighbor's bathroom. Now, here's the point. Imagine someone taking his bath with foam. He has made all the foam. You know what I mean? Yes, sir. The sponge is full. Yeah. Is what? Lather. Okay, they lathered it yeah. with uh, this thing. There's no washing. Foam everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> the person is here to pour water on his face. So. Oh. Oh, man. You need to see the way some Nigerians take their bath. Where do you see so? You know, we, we used to live in what you call compound. Is yes, that yeah, yeah, compound. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Where you can see, see the person's head yes, yes, while yes. taking their bath. Yes. Both man and woman. You, get me, you, know, you, you see soap. Yes. And we used to use soda. When I was in the village, we used to use soda yeah, yes. to wash up. Ah, God punish pimples. Oh. With soda, you can't have pimples now. It will roast it all. <laughs> so, imagine they were taking their bath. And they started hearing this noise. You think that guy will remember Tower? No. <laughs> <laughs> with with <laughs> soapy eye. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> and if you say, that king of Israel is wicked, though. It took us by surprise. Now that I'm taking my bath. He didn't even let me just pour water <laughs> on, on my face. See so. Ah, but I'm from Bonifis, where are you conversation? I was just washing my leg, rinsing my leg, trying to do like this. Wash the sore of my face. <laughs> That's why I started here. But they ran, the Bible says they fled. The Lord did it. Now, I have a concern. Because as you go home today, make a decision. Yes, sir. That your words, God will carry them from this day forward. Amen. Yes. And put it in the minds of those whosoever. You don't need to know them. Yes. That will make that miracle Amen. you desire happen. That the Lord, because of you, your word, now notice, it is the words of Elisha that is still working. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. The Lord, the words of Elisha influence the reasoning of four lepers. Yes, sir. And the same words of Elisha that influenced the reasoning of four lepers created chariot sounds. Yes, sir. And Elisha did not know what is happening. Yes, sir. He has already spoken. To save his head. But those words are working. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. In the minds of who? He does not yes, know. Yes, and we don't need to know. Yes, Lepers. Yes, so even a prophetic word can locate a beggar. Yes, sir. That will make things happen for you. Yes, sir. Beggar. Yes, sir. Beggar. Yes, <coughs> Beggar. Pastor Christian um, won the Republican primary. So by November, he'll be contesting against a Democratic. He said, I'm not a Republican. Don't, don't look at me funny. I'm not a Republican. <laughs> it is Pastor Christian that is a Republican. Now, when our papa gave Pastor Christian the word, yes, sir. you understand? Yes, sir. <clears throat> Pastor Christian won the primary. Yes, then somebody Pastor Christian does not know, yes, does not know at all, yes. accused the state Republican chairman for not helping Pastor Christian. Wow. And the thing began to cause problems mm. in the state Republican Party. The party chairman now had to be looking for Pastor Christian. The words of our papa, yes. he was causing problems. Yes. Yes. That was his yes, That's how the word of God was. Yes, sir. When it comes out from the prophet, Pastor Christian does not know. Even the chairman, Pastor Christian had to be explained to him, I don't know who is even saying this to you. Please forgive me. I, I want to tell you that I have nothing against you. The chairman said, look, I want to see you. We must help you. Yes, yes. Sir. Now the chairman is trying to save his head. Yes, yes. Somebody somewhere, the words of Papa Joshua Gill are steady yes, yes, yes. to accuse the party state chairman for not helping Pastor Christian. Yes, Meanwhile, the guy has already won. No. But this time around, for, for him to move to the next level. Yes. Somebody somewhere, Pastor Christian does not know. That man is like the four lepers. Yes. 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 This is how the word of God yes. is. Yes. Now, Papa Jesus yes. Aguila is far away in Nigeria. Yes. His words is causing problems in the minds of... Do you understand? Yes. Causing confusion. You must help this guy. Yes. Yes. I mean, the party chairman. Yeah, we saw the pictures too. They, they were having lunch. I was talking to him. Telling him he was about to go and see Donald Trump's folks. That's not our business. Help the guy. <laughs> it's not my business. Do you understand? Yes, sir. And somewhere, somebody somewhere just said it. That even the state chairman cannot even help Pastor Christian. Yet, Pastor Christian won't without his help. 
That man cannot sleep. The man came looking for Pastor Christian. That's what you're looking here. See, there are patterns in scriptures. We don't need to know how this thing yes, is going to happen. Yes, yes, yes. But the rest are short. It will cause confusion in certain quarters. It will cause confusion in certain quarters. So that everything can align in your favor. That's how it works. Unstoppable results. So you need to understand that unstoppable results it causes confusion somewhere. Yes, sir. When the world goes forth, yes, it will cause a shaking somewhere. Yes, sir. And then everything will begin to fall into place. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. The moment somebody see you are said to King Saul, because you have rejected the word of the Lord, the Lord has rejected thee from being king. Yes, sir. King Saul stops sitting on the throne. Mm -hmm. See him sit throne. It is his palace. He cannot sit. He said, please lower the dining table. He now started sitting on the floor yeah. to eat. He said, so that I can hold my javelin. Javelin. Okay. And for the rest of his life, till he died, he did not sit on the throne again. Meanwhile, see him sit through. Ah, confusion in his mind. Yes. Do you understand? Yes, sir. Anytime he looks at the throne, he, he sees a lion barking at him. You want to sit here, fire. Exactly. <laughs> confusion. Wow. Yes, sir. He said, I must kill David. Oh, yes, sir. <laughs> oh, no. The first time King Saul slept very well in his life. The first time he slept very well in his life. After Samuel had told him God has rejected him from being king. The first time God gave him good sleep was inside a cave, yes. not in a palace. So, brother, we boot you out of this place. <laughs> you don't understand. The words of the prophet. Oh. Like our papa has said now, unstoppable results. Oh, God word that he has declared yes, about Joshua Yes, sir. Is yes, already causing confusion. It has gone for it. It will cause it to enter certain yes, sensitive quarters. Yes, and disorganize and scatter yes, certain people. Yes, Including those who were sitting on your glory who thought without them you cannot advance. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That word is scattering everything. Yes, Some of them will resign suddenly. Amen. Notice, yes, these men, yes, like we said, ran away in a hurry. Yes. They were taking their bath. So they were trying to pray to whatever God they were serving. They ran away. They said, wait, what is this noise coming on? And I just finished eating beans. And <laughs> you know, it, it takes three hours before beans settles. <laughs> He said, run away. When I ate salad, this man did not cover. When I was eating peanuts. Now, the, 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 the camp chef just prepared beans now. They now ate beans. So I said, I can't leave soda. But, uh, let's run away. He said, but I just said, I have a, he said, man, my sheet is very heavy right now. The man said, ah, it's like this leprosy is coming back again. Let me run away. I don't like problem. Because Neymar never lost any battle. So he didn't want to even fight a battle he would lose. He's only hearing noise of chariots. He said, brother, look, oh, let's leave this thing. Someone said, how about the gold? Someone said, leave gold. Oh. You go and dig another one. Let's read. Take your seat, please. <laughs> I said, God is disorganizing things. Yeah. So that the people that needs to be yes. disorganized yes, to favor you, they are already disorganized. Yes. We're trying to show you the mechanics to the word of God. Once the prophet, like our Papa Papa yes, Joshua Gila, he has already given the word already. This is how the word of God works. It causes confusion. Amen. It will disorganize things. Amen. So that everything can align in your favor. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Hmm. Yes, sir. <laughs> Wherefore they arose in the midnight, that same time, the four lepers decided they were coming to the Syrian camp and left their camps and left their, left their tents and their horses and their asses, even the camp as it was, and fled 
for their lives. And when the lepers came to the uttermost part of the camp, they went into one tent and did eat and drink <laughs> and carried their silver and gold and clothes and hid it and came again and entered into another tent and carried theirs also and went and it was power has changed hands we are not there we are not there I, I can't remember the last time I saw gold now I'm saying gold I can touch it it's not my own nobody's name is on it so bro, let's hide this to me even lepers Kuturu. Yeah, in, in Nigeria they call them Kuturu. Leper has hand to carry gold. The Bible said they sat down and ate. They drank. So that means that these people, they were, peop they were eating. They, all, they were about to eat. So I have already eaten because they only entered two. Two tents and discovered that there was food there. Even camp, the camp caterer, chef, she carried pot around the world. She even left pot. They left as a less eat. We've not been, we've not eaten, no. They yes. packed gold as ever. Say, now, nah. after everything, now nah, I'm a rich man. I'll see who stoned me. <laughs> With this gold as ever, I'll go and do facelift. Plastic soldier. <laughs> I'll have artificial patent yes, fingers. Yes, exactly. Lucy that used to chase me away when she sees me now. Oh, she gonna be running. Yes, sir. What is the carry closer? Raiment. Ah. So, so maybe they took names on. It doesn't matter. See, Neman is our brother. He used to be leprous. So, <laughs> so they carried everything. But when they were about to enter the third tent, see what they said. Blessed be God. Blessed be God. Verses 9. Then they said one to another. Can we read please? One to go. For me. Then they said one to another. We do not well. This day is a day of our Lord our Stop. You see, when I gave my heart to Christ, when I left frater the fraternity, this was the first story I learned in the Bible. Mm. This was the first story. And I could relate with it because I was like a leper too. Mm. This, <clears throat> this verse of scripture, verses 9, apart from John 3.16 that I knew from childhood, this was the first verse of scripture I knew after I gave my heart to Christ when I left the fraternity. Verses 9. You can't be reading it like that. He says, this is the day of good tidings and we hold our peace. He says, we did not well. <clears throat> if we keep quiet, this is good tidings. That's what we tell people. Invite people to church. So say, I'm being blessed here in this church. Okay, invite people to church. Because you're not inviting people, you are holding your peace. Yet you are in the day of good tidings. He says you are not doing well. When you refuse to tell people where you worship. He says that this is the day of good tidings and we hold our peace. Good tidings. Gold and silver. Good food. He calls it good tidings. He said, I can't hold, we can't hold our peace. He said, we are not doing well. If we keep quiet, we are not doing well. Let us go back and tell the king that there is surplus here. Yes. Now, you need to understand. <clears throat> these were people who were really maltreated yes. by the people they were not concerned about. Yes. So, yes. Say, look, even though they, they didn't treat us right, but we can't let them suffer. Yes. We have eaten now. We now have gold and silver for ourselves. Let's go and tell them. Let's go and tell them. Because if we keep quiet, we are not doing well. 
See what they said, so that you can learn. Then they said one to another, we do not well. This is the day of good tidings, and we hold our peace. If we wait till tomorrow, if we wait till morning, tomorrow morning, till, he says some mischief will come upon us. And that is the truth. You wonder why sudden tragedy comes to your house. It is because you experience good tidings that you refuse to tell someone. Do you know, not, not inviting somebody to church will cost you. Make no mistakes about it. You come here, you hear the word of God, you have been blessed, and you refuse to tell somebody. And God will say, that's what he's telling you. He said, mischief will come. And see when the mischief will come in the morning. When you enter the morning of your life, that's when one tragedy will come. Then God will not trace it. Earlier on today, why I was ironing to come for service, and the Lord began to talk to me. He, he told me to talk to the sister. He said, there's one sister. He said, the reason why I've not blessed her is because of one thing she did. I said, what did she do? He said, remember, you appointed this sister to be in charge of some so, so, so thing in church. I said, yes. He said, remember what happened to those things? I said, what? I said, I remember those things were vandalized. The Lord said, that's why I'm not comfortable blessing her. He said, tell her. We didn't even plan to tell the sister after the service today. He said, tell her that I still hold that thing against her. So I said, Lord, really? That's what? I said, let it go. The Lord said, no, tell her first. If she will make adjustment, then I will bless her. But if not, I wouldn't. And I was baffled the Lord brought it up. But I did know how much those things cost us. Because we were buying the things. We were the ones buying the things for church. Like some of you, you don't know that what could be holding you was a bottle of water you drank that you left under the chair. And God said, really? Okay. You don't know. When we had Matt Moriah, somebody <coughs> came. Some people are wonderful sometimes. Somebody came and said, I want to talk to you about Sister Wisdom. I want to do this. I said, don't ever. Don't ever mention her name. I said, what Sister Wisdom does for this church? Yes. Yes. Do you do it? Exactly. You want to report Sister Wisdom? I said, if you try it, I will curse you. I said, I want to tell you. To, that was when I am at Mamuraya. I'm just saying it now. Sister Wisdom doesn't even know. When we had Mamuraya, I told the person. Yes. And the person left this church. I said, go. Yes. They gotta go. go. Yes. There are people you don't tamper with. True. Even the person was surprised. Mm -hmm. It was surprised. I said, Sister Wisdom, I said, don't ever, don't even mention that name. You can talk about somebody else. So. Mm -hmm. Of course, another crazy one wanted to talk about Pastor Eunice. I said, look, you see, as long as you live, you understand? You can't, Pastor Eunice is not somebody you can disfavor before me. I said, because we don't understand this thing. See, you yourself, you know, you can't do half of what person is done. You can't do half. They don't try to. There are just some people you can't spoil before me. You may talk about others. I can say, yeah, really. But there are some names you will call as a brother. Call. Don't even try to. There was somebody who traveled with us from Atlanta to New Jersey. The moment she mentioned Pastor Eunice and Pastor Kristen, mm -hmm. I did not talk to her till we got to New Jersey. Mm -hmm. Atlanta is 13 hours. Mm -hmm. I did not talk to her. She was trying to talk. To, I did not say a word. I was, I was angry. She started telling me, when we got to Pennsylvania, she said she's sorry. I was just, I said I did not say a word. When she mentioned Pastor Kristen, and Pastor Eunice, I did not. I, I wonder right then and there 
I wonder right there. I mean, I just wonder right then and there. And I kept quiet. The, we went to drop her in her house. And I drove because I was the one driving. I did not say a word. Don't do that. When you know these are the people walking in the house of the Lord, you will don't really see you. And when you do something, you think you did a mighty thing. God doesn't give you the right to talk. Because if God is going to talk, if there's anybody God is going to talk through, certainly it's not you. It's those who have been doing something in his house. Now he says, this is the day of good tidings and we hold our peace. He says, we did not wear. We, we are not doing well. Let's go and tell them. Otherwise, the mischief will befall us. And so, it was from this scripture, I started praying, may I be cursed if I don't preach. I, I prayed that prayer every day for four years. May I be cursed if I don't preach. May I be cursed. If, because they said, these are the days. This is the day of good tidings. We can't hold our peace. Invite people to church. They have to beg you first. We told somebody, why don't you invite us to church? He said, I'm waiting for the right time. I laughed. See, you're waiting for the right time. You, your life, you know what right time is. <laughs> I love that the person. <clears throat> anyway, they said, Now therefore, come, that we may go and tell the king's household. So they came and called on the potter of the city. That means the gate man to the city. And told him, saying, We came to the camp of the Syrians, and behold, there was no man there, neither voice of man, but horses tied, and asses tied, and the tents as they were. Meanwhile, they have already taken something. They say it is, it's as is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, they, you see, these men are wise, they learn from them. Yeah. So, so, I even saw gold. The potter will kill them. Yeah. So, we just saw the way it is. <laughs> and he called the potters and they told it to the king's house within. So the potter went to tell the, the king. Now, nah, see this stupid king. Stupid. Idiot. Crazy. Mad. See. And the king arose in the night and said unto his servants, I will now show you what the Syrians have done. Now he thinks he's wise. They know that we, we are hungry. Are you not ashamed, O king? You have even seen it with your mother, you are hungry. They know that we are hungry. Therefore, they went out of the camp to hide themselves in the field, saying, when we come out of the city, we shall catch them alive and get into the city. Eh, one of the servants said, O king, please don't be stupid. Eh, eh, see what one of the servants said. <laughs> Uh, verse 13, and one of his servants answered and said, well, let some take, I pray thee, five of the horses that remain. You see why? Only five horses remained in the whole of Israel. <laughs> Let's take some of the five horses that remain, which are left in the city. Hmm? Yes, sir. Yeah? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, <clears throat> and let us see, and let us send and see, Verse 14. They took therefore two chariots, <laughs> two chariot horses, instead of the five. <laughs> and the king, the king said, let's keep three. And the king sent after the host of the Syrians, saying, go and see. And they went after them unto Jordan. And lo, all the way was full of garments and vessels, which the Syrians has cast away in their haste. Thank you, Lord. Yes. That same God that did it then is doing it now. This is what it means by you own properties you did not even buy. You live in houses you did not build. Or maybe you don't want it. But. And the messengers returned and told the king. And the people went out. And spoiled the tents. So a measure of fine flour was sold for a shackle. 
and two measure of barley for a shackle according to the word of the Lord. Now, now, look up. Remember Elisha said, by this time by tomorrow. This time. Yes, sir. Eh? Yes, sir. The thing was even less than that. Yes, sir. It was in the night yes, this thing happened. Yes, sir. You see that? Yes, now, the sad part in this story is that none of these people, not even the king, came to thank the four lepers. Oh, you but the four lepers were grateful. Yeah, yeah, they have their own. <laughs> so whether you thank me. That's true. Now. <laughs> and the king appointed the Lord on whose hand he leaned to have the charge of the gate. And the people did what? They oh, trampled him on the, in the gate and he died as the man of God has said. Who speak when the king came down to him? And it came to pass, as the man of God had spoken unto the king, saying, to measure. So, see, you see, this, what we're reading here is exactly what our papa is telling us. Unstoppable results. We said it could be for good or for bad. <clears throat> the good part was that it happened. It was unstoppable. In spite of the army that came against it, the armies ran away. That's the good part. The bad part was this Lord who opposed the word of the Lord. Mm. When you oppose a prophetic word from a prophet, that prophecy, the adverse effect of the prophecy will come on you. Because now, the very mouth of Elisha produced two unstoppable results. One for good, one for bad. Now, you will never see that Elisha had gold and silver. Did you ever read that he had gold and silver? Oh. Please answer now. Oh. Did you ever see that Elisha came out to collect his own ration? You no. say, after all, after all, I'm the one who prophesied. And, uh, did he do so? His words produced everything. Never you ever say you are richer than a prophet. When the word you think you have came from the mouth of a prophet. We were going to talk to somebody recently, but we decided to just pause. We told the person, this is what the Lord wants you to do. The person started pursuing that thing vigorously, all out, all out. Then went to the Lord, later came and said, this person is so committed trying to do that thing that you told the person. I said, well, Lord, I thank God that you are opening doors. Then the Lord said, but the person is making a mistake. I said, what's the mistake? The Lord said, what the person doesn't know is that, because the person comes to give us feedback from time to time, that he met so-so person, so-so person wants to help him out, so-so person. So -so. Then the Lord said, I hear him say all those things to you. I said, then the Lord asked me, well, what, what would you like to say? I said, nothing really. I'm happy. The Lord said, tell him that he should listen to you instead. I said, but Lord, why should he do that? I mean, he comes to church from time to time. The Lord said, no. If, the, if I had not given you the word for him, he would never have known those people. He thinks those people are the ones that can help him. I said, is he thinking that? The Lord said, that's what he's doing. He said, but tell him to be careful. So I said, okay, I'll talk to the person. When I finally saw the person, I looked at the person. I said, Lord, I don't even want to tell the person. The person should have sense to know. You should have sense to know. That's the thing. Four lepers have sense. Even with your nice body, you don't have sense. To know this is where I received the word of the Lord. Why do I even think somebody outside will be the one to help me? Because the word of the Lord from the mouth of the prophet brought that person. 
Do you know how many musicians? Mm. Whitney Austin, Maria Carey, oh. many of them. Uh, what's, what's that woman again? Beyonce. Beyonce. They all started from the church. Yeah. Maybe the word of the pastor told them they will make it big. Yes. And so they went. Psh, they've all gone now. So now they think they have it made. But you know, one thing I learned from Whitney Houston's burial is that the same church she walked away from many years ago was the same church that received her in a casket. Learn from these four lepers. So how do you want to be received in your life? These people didn't do anything for the church. It's not as if Whitney Austin brought money and said, Pastor, let me renovate your church. This woman made it big in this world. When she was a member of that church, the was she did not expand the space, the church space. Nothing. But she is dead. Pastor is still alive. That's the thing. That's the thing. The one who brought the word is still alive. You that benefited once, the same word brought you down. That's why this month, this month, this month, the word of our Papa Papa Joshua Aguila, when he says unstoppable results, is a double edged word. Oh my God, yes, sir. Where some will be lifted, others will be judged and brought down. You need to decide. Elisha did not even say, please bring me some barley. He did it. He knew his word produced it. And none of them came to Elisha to say, thank you, sir. Not even the king. The king now is now appointing a man who doubted the word of Elisha. The word killed him because the word brought the provision in the first place. The people Still ungrateful, did not thank the four lepers who were considerate and compassionate. Never. Listen, <clears throat> no matter how you receive prophecy from a prophet, and you call it the favor of God, that favor can kill you. Because it matters how you treat the one through whom the word of God came. You know why God liked King David? You know why God said King David was a man after his heart? Would you like to know? Yes, sir. It's just simple. We'll tell you. If you don't want to know, you will move on. Simple. He built houses for prophets. And he was feeding them. That's all he did. King David did not know the Bible. Did not know the law. But the Bible says, this was what he did. He built a palace. And within the palace, he built a quarters for prophets. The same food he was eating was what they were eating. Feeding them. That's all. That's all. That's all. All the Psalms you read, written by King David. Can we tell you one truth you need to know? Answer yes, now. All the Psalms you read that King David wrote, God did not answer any. There's no record that God spoke and said, yeah, because I saw this Psalm. The first time God would talk to King David was when King David wanted to build God a house. That's not in the Psalms. But every other thing King David wrote as Psalm, God did not answer back. No matter how he prayed, oh God save me, deliver me from the snare. This and that, God did not answer one, not one. Because that's not what God is looking at. You are the one looking at that. That's not what God is looking at. Psalm 23, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He made me light and great pastor. God did. He was just saying what he was saying. God did not say it's true. God did not say it's true. But there were occasions where prophets would speak and God would talk back. The first time God spoke to King David, he had to send Nathan. Go and tell him. I hear King David say he wants to build me a house. That's the first thing. And that one is not in Psalms. That's in 2 Samuel chapter 7. It's not part of Psalms. So if you are relying on Psalms, thinking what has been written in Psalms is what God will use to lift you up, you miss it. I will read Psalm. If I read 52 Psalms, there's no way my problem will not go away. There's no way God will not answer. God did not even answer King David. All the Psalms, 
Even when he said, I call on the Lord and he heard me, this and that, there's no place in the Bible that God heard him. The only time. The only time. Even when King David suffered famine in 2 Samuel chapter 21, for three years, he had to go and inquire of the Lord, and the Lord said it was because of King Saul. But God was watching him suffer famine year one, year two, year three, yet he was still writing Psalms. So if you think Psalms is what God responds to, no. No doubt, a prophet may tell you, read some Psalms, and you will see, you will receive your miracle. When you read the Psalms and receive your miracles, it was not the Psalms that brought you the miracles. It was your obedience to the instruction of the prophets. Somebody see, I said, obedience is better than sacrifice. To be carrying some and reading is too sacrificial. Just obey. That's all. So I know you have planned some psalms you are going to read. It's uh, you are read. But the reason why we brought you here is to show you, in conclusion, something. Isaiah 55. Go to Isaiah 55. <clears throat> then we'll close. Actually, Isaiah 55 is our theme scripture for this, uh, for this word. Isaiah 55. Now, I want to start from verse 8. I'm going to verse 11. Verse 11 is our theme scripture. Of, do you understand? But let me start from verse 8. I'll do the reading. For as my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are my ways your ways, saith the Lord. So we say God's thoughts have not become our thoughts because we have the mind of Christ. It's not true, really. But, you know, preachers say those things. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways. Now, from what we just showed you, it's true. Because while the people were predicting manna will fall from heaven, God used four lepers to bring it. Amen, all right? Please answer now. Now, was Elisha thinking the thoughts of God or he just spoke the word of the Lord? Period. So I want to know what God is thinking. What will he do for you? All you need is the word of the Lord so that he can produce for you what he talks about. So now it says, for, for my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are my ways your ways, saith the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts your thoughts. God says, that's how I operate. My reasoning with you is this wide. So do you know what a prophet is? When the prophet comes to tell you what God has decided to do. God's decision is all of God's reasoning concerning a matter. If God says, I'm going to give you a wife or a husband, it means that God has thought about it and compressed it into a decision. And put it in the, mouth of a, in the heart of a prophet to yes. declare. Yes. In the mouth of a prophet to declare. So when you receive prophecy, prophecy is God's thoughts compressed in words. Now notice I didn't say expressed. Compressed. When Elisha spoke, he was speaking what? God's thoughts. And they scattered, went all over yes. to capture lepers, capture the Syrians, collect their goats, apprehend their goats for the children of Israel. God says that's half wide. That's how far I can operate. Somebody from Russia can wake up and start looking for you to bring you a business opportunity. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. For as the rains come down and the snow from heaven and return it not thither, but water it the earth and make it bring forth and bud, that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. 
So shall, verses 11 is what we're looking at. So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. He shall not return to me empty. Actually, the Hebrew said, he shall not return to me in emptiness. So that means that when God speaks his word, he expects a bag full. Yes, sir. A bag full. He says, he shall not return unto me void, but he shall accomplish that which I please, and he shall prosper. In what? In the day where I sent it. God says, when I send my word. So, when you come and you receive the word of the Lord. Like our Papa now has given us the word of the Lord. That this month is the month of what? Unstoppable results. That means that that word coming from God through our Papa. It shall follow you wherever you go. Amen. And prosper. Amen. Now, if the word prospers. Who would that word prosper? The person, the person who received it. Yes, sir. So which means every month that we receive the word of the Lord from our Papa, we should increase in prosperity. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now our Papa last month told us it was the month of crossing the line. Yes, sir. Right? Yes, sir. And God said that word must prosper, right? Yes. So we have entered that month. Yes. This new month now. Where what our papa has said last yes. month and in the since January, yes. previously in the past, yes, we have entered a place where all those things have accumulated yes. to produce. Yes. So even when he said this year is the year of triple greatness, yes. we have entered the month yes. where it cannot be stopped. Yes. So, some things may have hindered it in January, Honestly, in February, yeah. in yeah. March, yeah. in April, in May, in June, July, August. Yes, now in September. Yes, sir. He said, no, nothing can stop it. Yes, sir. Nothing can stop it. Now, in our next class, we're going to look at these two words. Accomplish and prosper. Because you can accomplish something and not be prosperous. How many of you agree yes, sir. that there are some people who graduated with the best results it's true. in college, yes, yes. yet they are not prosperous it's in yes, life? True. Very true, sir. God is saying, not my word. Not my word. See, you are offended. No, 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 no. God says, my words will not just only accomplish what yes, I've... He says it will prosper. It will prosper. And then return back to me back full. So God is saying, you will be the first beneficiary of everything that I say. Amen. Then for me, I will collect the leftovers. That's what it means by, it shall not return void. Remember, the, the little boy with five loaves and two fishes. Jesus took it from him and fed the 5,000. How many baskets did they gather? Twelve baskets. And the Lord said, give it to the, to the disciples. Jesus, actually, the 12 baskets, he took it. He didn't give the little boy. He took it. As far as he's concerned, it belongs to him. Jesus said, Who has bread? A little boy said, I have. And fishes. Five loaves and two fishes. Jesus said, bring it. Multiplied it, fed the people, got out 12 baskets and took it away. He didn't give the boy. There's no record that he gave it to the boy. But Jesus was trying to show us something. <clears throat> like God. It's a God behavior. I don't know that you can accommodate what we're about yes, to say. Sir. Yes, sir. God is saying, when my word prospers you, God is saying, 
when my word prospers you, I will become your beggar. Let's close. You didn't get it. God is saying, you take every, you take the main thing, give me leftovers. God is saying, concerning your success and your prosperity, I will be a Lazarus to you, eating the crumbs from your table. God is saying, let's close. It's not for you. God is saying it will never return to me in emptiness. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Jesus said, gather, gather the 12 baskets yes, sir. so that there will be no waste. So, which means what God will be blessing Mr. B with were the leftovers of what he blessed Mr. A with. Exactly. But to Mr. A, it is a miracle. Yes. It is brand new. Yes. But God says, it's the beggar's life. Yes. It's a leftover. Yes. When you gather more, I will collect again. Yes. God says, I want to be your beggar. Yes. You succeed. Yes. Let me gather the leftovers. Yes. That's why the Bible says, when you give to the poor, you are loaning to God. Because God wants to be a beggar. But God is very majestic. God is saying, I want you to be so prosperous that I will become a beggar. You didn't get yes, it. Didn't get because if you have that mindset, if you go home with that mindset yes. today, yes, you will never live in lack. Yes. Some people don't know. This is the only thing I do. I preach. This is the only thing I do. Some say, but you say you manage private jet. It's true, I do. But this is just the only thing I do, preaching. This is the only thing I do. But I'm not struggling because of this mindset. I know God is my beggar. God is my beggar. <laughs> in fact, there's a book of there's a part in the book of Proverbs that says, God says, when you give me an offering, then you can command me and send me on errands. Yes. Now, God is saying, when I give my word, yes. it is so that the word of God, so that the word that I speak, would accomplish. Yes. Yes. He said to accomplish. Yes. And then prosper yes. you. Amen. And then it will now return to me, not in emptiness, no, back full. Yes, sir. Which means God is saying, you be the beneficiary. Yes. Then the leftovers gather it for me and give me. Yes, sir. I didn't get it. So that guy you are discarding, God says, give him. That lady you are breaking her heart, God is saying, break her heart. Break her heart. It's true. Bring her. I'll repackage her. She'll, she'll be a miracle in somebody's exactly. life. Yes, then you wish you never left yes, her. God is saying, give me the leftovers. Yes. These people didn't know how great that 17-year-old guy would be. Yes, yes, he was looking smelly. God said, Bring, give him. You see? Do you notice Jesse, they discarded King David. Yes, yes. Even when someone was asking, is there no person in your house? Say, well, there's one guy. I don't really call him my son. God says, give him. That's the guy. Yes, sir. Leftovers, leftovers, leftovers. That's what God is asking you for. That's why you can't, <clears throat> you can't, you can't drive a car yes, and then discard the car and buy a new one. God is saying, that old car, give me. Oh. You know, so, somebody told me they wanted to buy a car, a new car. So I said to the person, what will happen to your this car that you are driving. If I said, well, maybe I'll just trade it in, add some money and buy. I said, why don't you give it to church? If I said, no, I can't do this to church. I can't give this car. This car is even a problem. I said, then fix it and give it to church. 
I said, but I'm, I still need money from the day. I said, it's okay. But he, the person didn't know. Before we got the car, we were driving. We've been buying cars for yes. people. Mm -hmm. It's yes. a principle. It's a principle. The person still has not been able to buy a car today. God is saying, give me the leftovers. Now, please don't go and bring your clothes that rabbits and mice have defecated. If you bring it here, can't you see the door downstairs? We have gates. Gates. <laughs> don't do that. Hmm. But if God is desiring leftovers from your life, it should be good. Yeah. Which means from this day forward, you are going to make things better. Yes. Yes. Even if you are not going to use them again. Yes. You're yes. going to leave them in good condition. Yes. Because God can come for them. God can come for them. Do you know why some people struggle in pain rent? Would you like to know why some people struggle? Yes, sir. Right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <clears throat> if I come to you as now, I can tell you why you have difficulty paying your mortgage. I can tell you why. You know why? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Because even if you are living in a four-bedroom flat or five-bedroom flat, all the rooms are full with your own things. There's no room that is empty for God. Rather, you say the, the, the room that is empty is for a guest. Oh, my God. And it's been 15 years, no guest has come. Even the one that came stole. He took something. God said they must eat. They don't even have anything for me. Then tomorrow you are not asking God to give you money for mortgage. God said give you which money? Which money? Learn to always make room for God. Yes, sir. We're not just saying figuratively, literally. Say so God has God's room. He owns yes. His. Yes. Hey God, you have a room here. You need to give us money for rent. King David wanted to build a house for God, not figuratively, literally. And God told the prophet, I'll prosper his generation. Yes, sir. Literally. Now, I'm not telling you to give God basement. You, you, sir, can you stay in your basement? <laughs> you know, Garage, I'll give God garage. Holy Ghost, stand here so that you know. Uh, it goes, I'm not even coming. That your garage, self. I'm not coming. That's why some people are not able to pay some mortgage. They are not able to pay. God will not provide it for them. See, so be careful the things you are attached to. God is saying, it is still my word. That's why Jesus said, man shall not live by bread alone. There's a lesson we wanted to start. But when the word of the Lord came, we knew we needed to teach this then. Amen. We wanted to start teaching on the origin of manna. But the Lord said, put that on hold. Let's address this one. Because Amen. the truth of the matter is that that one will not even work exactly. if you don't. Exactly. So, when you know that God desires the leftovers from yes. you, it will make you consciously start putting things in better order, in good condition. So I say, I don't have a car now. It doesn't matter. Whatever you have now, put it in good condition. Treat your clothes right. Put things right. Do things. Put things in perspective. Do things. Your shoes, don't be nasty to your shoes. You can't just carry your shoe and just wear it. You don't even know how to buy polish. Okay. If you are a man and you don't know how to polish shoe, you are in trouble. Oh. Or you don't know how to iron a shirt. So, so that's why I wear sneakers, so that I don't have to polish. Sneakers? You wear it on your wedding day. <laughs> sneakers? You are in trouble. Oh. Don't be like that. Oh. So if you tie rope on your waist, you call it belt. Don't try that rubbish again. Oh. Not in this church. Oh, yeah. Don't worry. One day, we will hold a special service. <laughs> We're going to be looking at the shoes you wear and, uh, and, and the belt you wear. 
Yeah, somebody for we go, not us weak. It is you and God. <laughs> but I'm a success forevermore. I'm a success forevermore. So we have entered a season for supernatural provisions. But whatever God will be giving you this period, take good care of it and put it in good condition. Some of you, you need to go and buy boxes. Good boxes and put your clothes in it. I'm not joking. That you are putting your clothes in a bag. 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 You know what I mean by bag? Bag that you can use one rope like this and do like this. Like a zip. Zip bag. Don't do that one. No. Treat your clothes well. That's why God is not giving you money for clothes. Go and treat things right. Yes, and now your card has been crying for help. <laughs> Who's helped your car? Help that car. That car is talking to God, in case you don't know. That car is like a leper. That car said, I would have brought a new car. For See, notice it was a leper who brought food. The, that your car that looks leprous. He's saying, please. Oh, Treat me there. I was thinking of today while driving. I, I was talking to the Lord about somebody. And I said, let's buy. I said, Lord, I, I want to buy a car for social person. The Lord now asked me which car. And I told the Lord a Porsche car. I did tell the Lord, I want to buy a Porsche car for somebody here. Then the Lord said to me, You see that person you want to buy a car for? I will give you the money to buy. But you know this person. Even you yourself, you shout all the time. So I say, Lord, it's true. Lord, please visit that person in the dream. Lord, I was telling the Lord, visit the person in the dream and hold Cain. Tell the person, I want to take you to the next level. But this Cain, yeah. Because I, I, I said, as we were driving, I said, I want to buy a Porsche car for social person. I said, this person deserves it. But the Lord was concerned. The Lord said, even this person that you want to buy this car for, I is the person you want to retain. Oh, mature people need to do that again. You don't know what it means to take care of something. What will it cost you to drive to a car wash? At least there's drive through. They are not telling you to come out of the car. Look, stay inside the car, let them wash it for you. You, even, you didn't even wait for the car to dry up. Zoom, you entered, you gather dust again. Don't be doing like that. I was serious though. Praise God. For the benefit of those who have not made Jesus the Lord of their lives, you have an opportunity to do so. The Bible says, if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus. And believe that God raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. You know, there are people who say, well, I believe in God. Well, believing in God is not what will bring you salvation. Because the Bible says demons also believe in God. See? And yet they are not saved. Some say, but I believe in Jesus. Believing in Jesus was before Jesus died, according to John 3.16. And when Jesus walked the face of the earth, you and I were not here. So are you saying we shouldn't believe in Jesus to be saved? No, that's not what God wants, really. Someone says, so how about the death of Jesus? Believing the death of Jesus was a cost because Jesus died a cost man on the cross. Galatians 3.13 says, cost is anyone that hangs on the tree. Jesus died a cost man. So you can't believe a cost to be saved. Someone says, okay, what am I supposed to believe? The Bible says we should believe the resurrection of Jesus. Romans chapter 10, verses 9 and 10 says, If thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and believe that God raised him from the dead. That's what God wants you to believe. Not to believe in God, not to believe in Jesus, not to believe his death, but to believe the resurrection of Jesus. That's where our Christianity begins from. Now you may ask, what, would, what, what, what benefit would that bring me? Believing the death of Jesus is what makes, believing the resurrection actually, is what makes you righteous. It says with the heart man believeth unto righteousness. And what do we believe with our heart? The resurrection. See, that's what God wants you and I to believe. 
You are not righteous by the good things you do. You are righteous because you believe the resurrection. Yeah. And then he says, with the mad confession is made unto salvation. You know, there are people who believe that when you give your heart to Christ, then God gives you his righteousness. No. The Bible says when you believe the resurrection first, God gives you his righteousness, and then you confess the Lordship to be saved. He says, with the heart mad, believe it unto righteousness, and with the mad confession is made unto salvation. Romans chapter 10, verses 9 and 10. So I'd like to give you an opportunity to acknowledge the Lordship of the name of Jesus. And you know that you know that you are a Christian. Say these words and mean it with all your heart. Say, Heavenly Father, Heavenly Father I thank you for your Son, I Jesus. Thank you for your son Jesus. My, Lord. My Lord. I call him Lord, I call him Lord because, I believe. because I believe. He rose from the he dead from, from, my from my righteousness. And at this moment, at this moment I confess with my I mouth that Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ is Lord of my life, Lord of my life from this day from forward, this day forward to, the to the glory of God, God my, Father. my Father. Amen and amen. amen. If you had made that declaration, I would like to congratulate you and welcome you into the family of God. I would like to pray for you. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your son and your daughter who have acknowledged the Lordship of the name of Jesus, having believed that you raised them from the dead. Your word says, whosoever cometh unto you, you will know why it's cast away. Even as these ones have come unto you, may they never be a cast away. May their feet never slide. And those of us through whom salvation came to them, may we also never be a cast away. May our feet never slide. And at the end of the day, may we spend all eternal glory with you at the rapture. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen and amen. Now talk to the Lord. Talk to the Lord. Father, let your word prosper in my life. May it never return unto you in emptiness. Amen. Don't fall asleep. Talk to the Lord. Father, we Wonderful, I know his name. I know his name. I know his name. His name is wonderful. I know his name. I know his name. I know his name, his name is wonderful, I know his name, I know his name, I know his name, say it, his name is wonderful, I know his name. His name is wonderful there means miracle working. Like what he did with the four lepers. I know his name. I know his name. Change my heart, oh God. Make it a my heart oh.